All right, you're all set to go. Great, thanks, David. Uh, good evening. Uh, the July 18th, uh, 2022 meeting of the West Harper Arch Commission will now come to order. My name is Chuck Corsi, I'm the chair. I wanna welcome you all to uh, the uh, uh, Commission on the Arts uh, meeting. Uh, this meeting is be, being conducted in a virtual format in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act as amended by Public Act number 21-2, which authorizes municipalities to conduct public meetings virtually. Members of the public can view the meeting live on West Hartford Community Television at www.whctv.org and www.youtube slash WHCTV5. The meeting is also being recorded for on-demand viewing and will be available on the town's website. Since we are conducting the meeting in a virtual format, there are some special rules and procedures that I need to cover before we begin. First, I ask all participants to mute your device when you're not speaking. If you wish to be recognized, please raise your hand and I will call on you in order I see hands raised. If you are participating by audio only, or I do not call on you when the debate is ending, then unmute your phone and let me know so that I can recognize you. Second, all speakers must make a good faith effort to state their, their name and their title at the outset of each occasion that such person participates in the meeting. Third, all votes must be taken by roll call unless the vote is unanimous. Fourth, a reminder uh that if any participant has a problem with connectivity you should immediately call david whose phone number you were provided earlier he will let you know and we will recess the meeting while the meeting the problem is being resolved if you cannot be resolved quickly we will ask you to call into the meeting using a phone to participate via audio only so with that let's proceed to the agenda we have called the meeting to order let's uh, do our roll call uh, Karen Bachman. Here. Matthew Bragg. Okay, Javier Colon. Here. Chuck Corsi is here. Latanya Farrell. So, Latanya, Ginny Kemp. Here. Carol McCabe. Here. Marilla, Marilla Panasor. Here. And Susan Rothenberg. Okay. Well, Tanya's here. I'm sorry I couldn't find my mute for a second. Yeah, yeah that nasty, uh, <laughs> nasty button, isn't it? Okay, let's get back to the agenda. Um, oh, first of all, uh, you've all seen the minutes from last meeting. Uh, does anybody have any questions on the last month's meeting minutes? Or actually, the May meeting minutes? We did not meet in, that, in June. Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion to uh, accept? Or motion to approve, I'm sorry. Latanya makes the motion, do I hear a second? Karen second. makes a second, excellent. I think this will be unanimous, all in favor, raise your hand, signify by saying aye. Carol, are you aye? Sorry to bother you, Carol. Just need to know if you approve the minutes. I, I put her down as a yes, and uh, when she comes back, we'll just, we'll just confirm that. I can't see any of you, but uh, there you are. Okay. Hey, you, you went out for a minute. Sorry about that. Carol, do you approve of the minutes? I do. I don't have an answer I, for that. I do. <laughs> Siri, Siri, does Siri have an answer? <laughs> Siri, I don't know why she went off, but she did. I love that. I love that. All righty, uh, motion uh, unanimous. Um, old business, um, St. Bridget, uh, some exciting news on this. The St. Bridget uh, committee meet, met for the first time in June. It's gonna meet again in September. Uh, I unfortunately was unable to attend because I was uh, in the midst of my second bout of COVID, <laughs> which was very, uh, I was very disappointed to, to miss it. Uh, one of the things, though, that was discussed is there is a questionnaire I'm going to send to each of you and encourage you to send it to folks in your orbits. Uh, this is the questionnaire that asks people, you know, what are you looking for uh, in this center? Um, 
I know uh, Marilla, one of the, you know, I'd encourage you to share it with folks at the symphony. And uh, I know one of the things that was being asked for was storage space. And, you know, this, this is, uh, this is when uh, stuffing the ballot box is ex acceptable. <laughs> you know, if you get as many people to, to, uh, uh, register that, uh, concern or, or that uh, desire, I think that's helpful, but I will send that to each of you. Uh, and then if you have any questions, feel free to email me back. Uh, this is not an item, uh, that, um, is a, a discussion piece for this commission. So we're not, this isn't a, um, a commission activity that would, that is subject to FOI. It's just distributing information. So I will distribute that all to you, uh, in the next day or so. And if you have any questions, give me a haul back. Do you, anybody have any questions right now? Okay. Sounds good. Moving right along. Um, so interesting news on, uh, some of these things with the town of West Hartford. There, the town is going is going to be offering. They haven't done it yet, but they're offering a program for facade improvements to businesses, and and offering uh, some so, some of the money <clears throat> that's been uh, retained for um, that the state is, has, or I'm sorry, that the town has gotten through the COVID relief. And within that facade improvement will also be included murals. So when the uh, when the town announces that uh, grant opportunity for folks to apply for, um, we'll do there'll be a little media around this, and it'll also highlight the fact that uh, facade improvement also includes uh, having uh, murals painted uh, on uh, property as well. So that's a very optimistic sign. That's one of those things that they they heard us and listened to us. Yes, Carol. Um, it, on and we had what is it? We had dot com today. They said I think the Art League is already um, proposing one. Did you see that, Chuck? For you know when you go into the um, parking lot behind like what's Toy Chest and all that the the entryway to the parking lot and they're asking artists to um, submit. Is that same thing as town or is that just separate? That's the art league. I think, I think that's separate. Um, yeah. But they, depending on who, um, if it's- Roxanne was quoted. Yeah. That's great. That. Yeah, yeah, it's a great locate. It's a great spot for it. It's supposed to say, welcome to West Hartford or something like that. Yeah. There's a... That was in on uh, Ronnie Newton's page today. I remember I was someplace recently where I was saying to myself, it just screamed for a mural and now I can't remember um, where it was. Anyways, um, but yeah, that's that's a program that's dovetailing with, uh, you know, money from uh, the COVID relief. Um, that might be something that they're just doing on their own. With yeah, that's what I was just curious if it was the same part of the same thing. Yeah, I'm not aware of that, but uh, that's great. That is fabulous. Um, you know, why don't we, the decorative uh, sil cylindrical advertising, why don't we wait to talk about this? Karen wanted to talk about um, the uh, Unity Green banners and, and kind of want to uh, talk about those two things together. Um, and the town is, has not done anything yet on uh, re revamping some of its zoning. Um, uh, requirements uh, to include set asides, but I do I do know uh, you know from a, a project that I'm working on is that developers do get credit for art exhibits at their um, in, at their um, properties uh, that helps them um, you know there's a kind of a scorecard uh, of things that they they need to do and. Uh, you know, if they're asking for specific waivers, uh, including public art, uh, helps them with that. Um, but why don't we, unless anybody has any questions about any of those things I just mentioned, uh, why don't we get into the nuts and bolts of uh, kind of where we're at and refresh our memories. I know my needs are refreshing. The uh, West Hartford Town Hall Public Display Committee art criteria and the display policy. Does that make sense with everyone? Okay, I am going to 
share. Can I share my screen, David? I think I can. Hold on. Yeah, so you should be able to, uh, just on the top, there's a bar for share. And then you can either choose, I think, a full screen or a specific window that you'll have open. Okay. Okay, let's try this. I hope it is. Wouldn't that be embarrassing? <laughs> All righty, can you see this? It says draft at the top. It's, it is really small. I don't know if there's a way to make it larger, but you can kind of see it. Okay, hold on a second. You can make it larger on your own screen. That's what I'm trying to do. Look at the top, Karen. There's a, and on mine anyway. Oh, okay. You can increase it on your own screen. I just did. Hold on. Because I need that. I need it bigger too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to, I don't, oh, here we go. There you go. How's that? Is that it a little better? Much. Okay. Much better, much better. So this is, this is the document that Ginny and I have been working on and actually with all of your feedback uh, for quite some time. We've already discussed, and I'm just going to run through this, the observations and recommendations, uh, public display recommendations by floor. Um, and then I think this is new. Am I right, Jenny? Yes, I think this is. So this is, um, I think this is what we had sort of combined. Yep. Back in May, and then what's what's new is the um, call for artists form, and the addendum to that, which is call for um, the application process guidelines, etc. More focused on the first floor gallery was my impression. Okay, um, that's why I'm glad you're here, Jenny. I'm pretty sure that's what we are going to focus on today. Were those two new documents? Yeah, let me just uh, pull up. Did my share that? Okay. Now I'm looking and can't find my share screen button. So, Jay, it was the donation form in the artist call to action? Right, yes, in the donation form, exactly. So there was the um, call to action for, or the, you know, call for artists form with an addendum around how that application process works. And okay. then there was the donation form, you're right, yep. Are you guys seeing this? The donation yep. form, okay. So you see, I actually emailed these to you all. Um, what What are you calling the call for do, um, artists form? I have the donation form. Okay, let's look at the do donation form first that we have up on the screen. Does anybody have any thoughts, comments on this? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, it's just something to bring up and then you can decide yes or no. Yep. Um, sometimes people will, I know this because my daughter worked in an auction house and, um, and she also worked where the house would go out and evaluate um, art and artifacts at museums in order to insure them. And so if somebody donates, I'm going to say, let's say a, a historical document that is of good big significance and may have some monetary value it's possible that the town will need to insure it um you know against damage fire yada yada i mean that get, it needs to get decided somewhere but a question to ask might be has has your piece or your work 
been um uh, what's the word when appraised and then appraisal value okay it's something to think about i mean you know when we think about this stuff we're thinking oh nice little photographs that got taken of the ice pond when people were taking ice out of it or something like that but even a work of art of somebody who may be significant you know, Wallace Stevens was a poet who came, what, from Simsbury or somewhere like that? Hartford. And any, Hartford. Okay, that's right, the Wallace Stevens Walk. Yeah. So you have, if there's an original poem on an original piece of parchment paper, whatever, you know, that could that's worth a lot of money. Um, yeah. Or it's worth in the collector's world. Uh, so it, it's interesting to have some knowledge of that now all people need to do is say yes or no you know they may not have had it appraised but if they had that would help the town in knowing whether they need to insure it or not the town's going to need to have some sense of that anyway when when things get donated even the stuff that's already there i don't or that they already own even if it's not displayed i'm wondering if if, if we do that by a, just a question is, is uh... Is, is your donation or prospective donation uh, valued over X amount of dollars? What do you think, Jenny, going to the expert? I think if they have more specific information, that would be, I don't know why that, it would be great to know it. I think Karen has a good point. Um, I guess the question would be, do we wanna make it as specific as, I sort of like the idea of has your piece, whatever you're donating been appraised, if so, what's the, what's the appraised value versus sometimes people will say what's you know if you're donating something to an auction what's the estimated value and the estimated value could be anything the person comes up with right um so i guess that's the question i i like that idea um yeah. i think uh you know i hadn't really thought about that but then the t that would be helpful information for the town to have you know I just wrote down, has your donation been appraised? If so, what is its value? So I think we might want to add this in maybe at the uh, right here before, please. Or. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Okay, excellent question. And uh, addition, Karen. Well, I would never have thought of it except that, you know, I remember that my daughter used to work in that field and um, that information came up, you know, that I learned it through her. Excellent. It's good to learn from our children. <laughs> yeah. They have a lot to teach us. Just ask them. Teach your children. Yeah, right. Teach your parents well. Right. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Excellent. Any other uh this is just a, a, a quick down and dirty one pager. We'll add that to it. And then we're obviously going to send these all out to uh, give everyone one last uh, crack at it. So that's the donation. Uh, here's the call for artists. Boy, lots of grammatical errors. Who did this? <laughs> I guess I have seen that. I don't know that it was attached in the last thing you sent out, but I have read this. And that was my thought that it needs to be just proofread better. Um, this was, this is also, and this is something that um, Chuck, we can, now that we've sort of created documents specific to that gallery, whatever we want to call it. Yeah. Um, we can probably tease out some of this information from that other larger, like sort of overview document that we came up with before. There is, you guys have seen this material before, yeah. but 
it, it felt like this was really specific to this gallery. And so it, it made sense, I thought, to attach this information to the call for artists just so they have some a better sense of what they're applying to be part of, you know? Yes. So why don't, why don't we do this? Ginny, you and I, um, we're not going to meet. We don't meet in August just because everyone's uh, traveling around. But before, um, sometime in August or before, Ginny and I will get you guys final copies of all this to please go through and review and make any, you know, m many of it we've already approved, but just give it one last uh, go over. And, uh, you know, we'll wrap it up in September. And then what we can do is uh, we'll go out and share this with the mayor, uh, the SE, the town clerk, and uh, Rick uh, Ludwig with uh, the town manager. Let's see, stop sharing. Okay. Uh, Marilla, sorry about that. Yes. No, that's fine. Uh, so there are no sculptures, right? So all the um, art pieces are to be displayed, um, hanged on, on the walls, correct? I, I, I was just wondering because uh, I've seen a reference to size artwork to be, you know, displayed, but it's a big, vague, um, in my opinion, you know, for artists only for uh, paintings, you know what I mean. That's a good question. Um, I I don't think um, I think if that we should include in there all types of art for display, and then whether I mean if the sculpture is too large, I mean I don't think you'd put a, a you know a delicate sculpture in a hallway, but maybe there's a, a location. Uh, where it can be a little bit more protected. Um, but yeah, I don't think our intention was to limit uh, anything. Um, but that would be a, a decision. To be made, all, you know, yeah. at a later time. But um, I think it would be better to be spelled out clearly that these are also um, included, you know, the sculptures or any other mixed media type of um, project, so. When you say mixed media, what do you mean? Ah, I live with an artist, so, okay. you know, so, you know, a painting that continues and morphs into a mini sculpture, that's an installation that <clears throat> needs a, uh, you know, a certain spot somewhere where it could be displayed properly. So it's mixed. <laughs> it, Part of it might be hanging on the um, wall. Part of it might come out of it, like a three D. Wow, piece. I I think um, that we should encourage. I mean, we should allow folks to present anything they they'd like. Uh, whether or not the building and the areas can accommodate it, that would be left up to the to the decision. Yes, the selection yes. committee. Mm -hmm. My other thought on this, um, I'm looking at the page of public art criteria and display policy. Yeah. And in number two, that's where the recommendation is made for the PDC. The, I guess that means the West Hartford Public Display Committee. All right. Yeah. And yeah. that makes it easier to talk about it later on. When you go over the documents, I almost think that should be pulled out and put as a recommendation because it's not a criteria and it's not policy. You know what I'm saying? That's an important recommendation you're making as well as that the curation should be done by a um, professional who knows how to do that. Those two recommendations shouldn't be just embedded in criteria and display policy. They're, they're good, they just need to be yeah. more prominent. As, okay. a, as a recommendation. Which ones? Num number two? Number two is one of them, yes. And then there's another place in here where you talk about a professional curator. 
Yes. That also should be pulled out. I'm looking for it right now. Um, hmm, I can't pull it. It is somewhere here on one of these pages about it. I saw it on something I was reading somewhere else here, professional curator. Yeah. Um, but those are two recommendations we're making. So you have those those recommendations in the first document, the draft about um, observations and recommendations, and then the second page is public display recommendations by floor. And then maybe somewhere in there is the recommendation that this committee be established, and then the criterion policy be separate. And that that statement about a, a um, maybe that should be connected to these this first document, which is going to go to the mayor and the town. Yeah. With recommendations, because that's important. Yeah. It shouldn't get lost. It, you know that. Yeah, I think that is something um, that because I really don't think town hall could pull off a rotating gallery unless they do have, unless there are funds to hire someone to really take the lead in curating and like installing, helping, you know, taking the the lead role in that. So I do think that's an important thing to um, to highlight for sure. Yeah, what do we uh, curate or let me just see what I think. I think, that's where, I think that's where it got, what I was saying before is we came up first with this, this document recommendations and, um, or observations, recommendations by floor. And then I think what happened with that larger document is it got a little murky with um, recommendations and the observations. And then we went into details around what, what the public art display. I think there's room for Chuck and I to review that to make it more clear and then separate out the, the the recommended policies and procedures for that specific gallery on the first floor and what are the recommendations around public art display in town hall in general you know that you know things like it's up to this public display display committee to decide how long art will stay on a certain floor depending on what else is in the rotation the historical relevance so on and then there may be some overlap for the the gallery, but the gallery is a totally separate piece. I see that as its own little sort of taking on its own life, assuming that they can hide, there's some funding to hire a curator and so on. So I think there's room for maybe Chuck, you and I in the next couple of weeks can like really make those documents more defined, you know, I think yeah. there's some confusion there. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I'm looking at it, maybe even just changing some of these headers because the, the headers, like the titles, might be a little mm -hmm. misleading. But yeah, yeah we'll I think all the information that is there. But Karen, I think you have a good point. How do we make sure it's a really clear document that's easy to follow? And yeah. The curator is mentioned under first floor in, in the in the sheet that says public display recommendations by floor, it's mentioned there with no reference to who hires the person. There is somewhere where you say that that should be hired by the town, but yeah, that just go through it. You'll figure it out. Yeah. It's a really great thing. I mean, this is very detailed and well thought out. You've put a lot of work into it. Thank we you. All have. We all have. Thanks, Karen. All righty, Ginny, do you have any uh, other last minute thoughts or anybody else? And Marilla, that was a good suggestion. Uh, I've written down some notes that we have to, you know, it's not just about prints. Um, it's other forms that, that can be accommodated in town hall. Okay. Go back, see if I can find our agenda. Um, no. uh, are there any uh, committee updates? 
what's what's new with the uh, arts and culture collaborative oh right 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 i had to go through what the committees were <laughs> yes <laughs> all right so at celebrate we did um host a or we meaning the organizations nonprofit organizations that are in the collaborative and a couple of them that didn't have booths but they were part of it we hosted a bingo um game to increase everyone's awareness of the organizations that were there or in town and um by and large it was successful um i mean it increased i mean going from our own booth people would come over to get their little bingo card stamped by the west hartford witness corral and then they'd move on to the the symphony next to us and then a few doors down or a few booths down was the playhouse so each time they went to a different booth they got more information or they engaged with someone or maybe they saw someone they knew and didn't know they were involved in that organization you know so we feel like it was anecdotally we all said it was worth doing um we have some glitches to work out uh we had winners everybody got awarded uh the prizes that they were promised and one of the best ones was chuck, uh, chuck had promised um yard goats tickets so actually a friend of mine won that so i'll be able to see how those tickets Good. were <laughs> Good. but um we got in touch with all the winners uh, we didn't get much publicity out of any of it um we did not get permission to say who the winners were publicly so it was tricky about that but we submitted a couple of articles to weha but we didn't get anything printed i mean it would have been nice to have it be you know at least pre pre event to have had that more awareness about it but we all put it on our facebook pages and we put it because we had a nice graphic, a good poster that came out of um, somebody from that works for Roxanne. And um, everybody pitched in, it was really nice. Everybody had prizes they were offering. And, and also it was a nice thing for us to do together because it felt really positive as opposed to some of the work that we've done as a committee have been really responding to negative like pandemic and shortage of funds. And, and it's led, I think, to more sharing, which is great. The real glitch is we ended up with about 70 names um, that had emails, people who, you know, put their little ticket in for a prize. And now there's sort of a legal thing, a privacy thing about whether we could actually use those emails for our mailing lists or so we're trying to figure out how to capitalize on them. Like, you know, so maybe some of us can reach people who didn't know about us or didn't know about our event, but you can't just send a blanket email advertising your event because you have an email to somebody. No one gave their permission to use their names um, so or use their emails. Next time we'll we'll correct that. I think we probably will do it again. I mean, it was, it was a good thing. Is that a thing? What? The privacy you can, thing? You, if somebody gives you their email, you can't use it to send them an invitation to a party? Well, <laughs> apparently, um, Tracy came up with some legal statements about it and the attorney who consults with our board said the same thing that really? they haven't given their blanket permission i mean don't you every time you sign up for something like i don't know maybe there is small print you know like that you sign up to be on a uh some some kind of a raffle or a lottery they always start sending you. you're on their email list forever unless you opt out and even then they might not let you go you know so <laughs> But I thought the act of them writing down their email address. Is... It didn't say your address might be used or or how somebody gave me the wording, but I don't have it in front of me. Boy. You know, their, your address might be used to get it more. It should have said opt in for more information about West Hartford arts and culture. And then if they checked it, then you knew you had permission. So we're working on sort of backtracking on it to be, you know, we don't want to make anybody angry about using their emails because they happen to be in a raffle. No, I'm just thinking selfishly, I'm in big trouble because <laughs> I'm always, oh, I'm always, if I get somebody's email and, you know, I think they might enjoy something or they might be interested in something. It might be the whole raffle thing because, right, Chuck, because around oh, yeah. that, it's, I remember what we've had to deal with. Oh, okay. With that, I mean, it's. 
I feel better. There's a rule. Hopefully you have to register to do that and um, with the state and all that. So because, it might be around well, the raffle versus we were able just to putting do it. email down. Because it was free, it's yeah. no money involved in it. Nobody was okay. giving any any funds to yeah. um, to win, um, so that we could avoid that. But I think there are rules, mm -hmm. and if you're doing it personally, like you know, you know a million people, and so you disseminate information, Chuck, because people might be interested. Is a little different than an organization putting yeah. you on their email, and now they're sending you their newsletters and invitations to their events and all of that. So I don't know. I, you know, I never occurred to me, but Tracy came up with some real clear um, criteria that she was told. Well, she, um, she probably has to have it because they, Tracy, they send Tracy's a lot. Very good at keeping people informed as to what's going on at the playoffs. Oh, she is. Yeah. They send yes. a lot of emails. So they do. Sure she's yes. Ahead. They're really good too. Yeah. yeah, they are. They are. But so that was a very show, successful um, project on our part. Uh, I know everybody's anxiously listening and waiting to the, about the St. Bridget's property. Uh, they are asking me what's happened to those Morris columns. I guess we're going to go back to talk about it because nope. everybody feels as if there's no good way um to capitalize on walk by traffic and people who are at other things in west hartford center to capitalize on that to advertise and um we're all competing for that those two posters on the on the green on unity green so when we get to that i can talk a little more but people are asking what's happened to the morris columns what what do we need to do to push it forward how does the town feel about the expense they really don't want that to get lost that's a good point. Um, well, that's great. I'm it's, I'm really happy to hear that uh, the collaborative is is really doing it. I know that uh, the Shakespeare Festival they had a great performance. Pippin, encourage you to go see Pippin. That was that was fabulous. If you haven't seen the Shakespeare one, uh, much ado. It's a great rendition of it. There's a lead actor that is totally wonderful. They're all good, but yeah. he really carries the show. I saw it. When did I see it? Yesterday. It's really worth going to if you haven't been yet. And I know Pippin got a wonderful review. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Karen, for that update. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we let's uh, let's let's why don't you, uh, you you keep going? Um, okay. <laughs> tell us, a, yeah, tell us about uh, what people are saying about the banners. We we know the problem, but uh, it, it's good to get an update on what, what people are uh, saying. Well, the Morris columns were researched and proposed because there was no good place to, the, the town doesn't have an electronic system that, you know, might display events that are coming up this week. Um, Weha is hit or miss, whether you get an article in or not, just depends, I think, on what the news cycle is. Um, we're not sure who's checking the calendar. So the calendar that the um, Chamber of Commerce has and then the patch calendar, it's all hit or miss. And so um, and the I was reminded about how limited the Unity Banner system is. When it first started, it was really just events that were going on in town by the nonprofits, mostly arts, but sometimes it was sign up for Little League Baseball. Now it's all kinds of stuff that is competing for those two banners. You finish an event, you need to get onto the um, calendar for the Department of Public Works the very next day. And even if you do, because you're not supposed to book more than one event, um, you no, know, you can book more than one event, but you can't book two like in several years. You have to wait till the event happens, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you have the event. I just had this happen to me in June. And you go on the next day to book the next year's event because you have the date for it. It's full. There's two. There's only two banners. And the day I went on, there was some organization not in West Hartford who were advertising. So that's what really enraged me that I thought, first of all, there should be some kind of policy about it. Some kind, if we only have two banners, it's an effective way. I think it sits up there for a week, um, Monday to Monday. And um, 
depending on the weekend, a lot of people go buy it. And if your banner is pretty effective, it might pull in people. Um, certainly, I know one of the first users of it was the uh, symphony. I remember that in the yeah. beginning, I sort of paid attention. And, you know, you don't know for sure if it pulls people in, but it gives you visibility as an as an organization in town. Um, so it's inadequate the way we're doing it and it appears to be very random by who makes it to the calendar first and what kind of um, events should be being displayed up there there's no policy on it i'm just writing down some There used to be some a banner. Let's see, they did the two banners at Unity Green, and then there was a banner, or maybe two, over at Park Road. Oh, when you got right. off the highway? Yeah, there used to be something over there. They've stopped doing that. They've stopped putting them up. They're not cheap, by the way. They're very expensive. Um, you have to have a banner that meets the exact requirements of the town. So you're probably looking at two to three hundred dollars for that printing, and then depending on all the things you put on it, color and all that, and then, gosh, I think it's up to two hundred dollars just to hang it and take it down each time you do that as an organization. So, you know, it's it's expensive, but it it can be effective, but it's inadequate. Yeah, and it's becoming too competitive and unequal. I think. I don't know how you'd make decisions. I mean, if you have three organizations who want the same week, which yeah. happens a lot at Christmas time. Yep. And then again, it happens like in that early June period. How do you choose? I don't know. No, really, you really have has something to say. Yes, I was wondering, if, for example, the Corral has um, very specific, just like the symphony, because I know that we tend to keep the first week in May or, you know, for a concert, if the town already knows how historically, you know, we reserve that particular week for the main event, uh, I would hope that they come to the symphony or to the corral to ask first, hey, are you still doing this uh, this year? Because I have two other inquiries and somehow, and keep it in West Hartford uh, and and serve better these organizations that had always that uh, have addresses in West Hartford. Yes, yes that have yes, addresses yes. in West Hartford. There are many groups that might perform here in a church, but they're not West Hartford based. In our, right, they're not in they're regional and they're not addressed in West Hartford. Yeah. Well, that's that's maybe something that you know could be brought into uh, discussion. Yes. Yeah. How could it be more equitable for the organizations in town? Yes. I uh, well, before I open my mouth, um, does anybody else have any other thoughts on this? I'm not. You know, I haven't given up on the idea of the Morris columns. Unfortunately, you know, things do not happen quickly when we're talking about. Uh, uh, the town in terms of, you know, taking action, especially to spend money. Um, but I think this is a discussion, you know, to kind of go back to where we started with, with uh, St. Bridget. I mean, there, that's a, that's a perfect place to have some sort of, um, announcement board, you know, uh, West Hartford Center, you know, it, that's great with the banners there. But I think it's, you know, a lot of times you, you have to take advantage of the opportunities that come up to to talk about your issue. And St. Bridget gives us an option that maybe, you know, Morris, that would be a great place to try out some Morris columns. And if they work out, you know, you know why can't we put it on the corner, uh, you know, maybe one by um you know the veterans memorial on uh, farmington in uh, south maine or uh you know somewhere at bishop's corner or um, park road um i'm i'm not i haven't given up on that but i 
I will um, reach back out to uh, Todd Dumay, our town planner, who is a big fan, by the way, of uh, the Morris Column concept, and uh, the town manager, um, who was very, very much open to it. Um, again, it's it's spending money. Uh, don't know how much they are, but the last thing we want to do is put something really cheesy and cheap looking. Um, that doesn't uh, hold up well. Uh, and, you know, that I think they're a great idea, but maybe, you know, as part of the conversation, it's not that we're scrapping the banners at Unity Green. Um, it sounds like we, we, we'd we like to have a better process where, you know, maybe we can go back to those people. I mean, we know, at least my experience with it was always getting, uh, you know, for my years with kids and pops and jazz, making sure that, you know, those banners were up for pops and jazz and we had to get that reserved well in advance. But it, it seemed almost like that was something that was on some some sort of list. You know, a play at Connor, the musical at Connor, you know, that's- Always the same weeks, yeah. yes. Or, you know, roughly the same week yeah. but, that month. But you, I mean, there's certain must have events you know, celebrate always gets up there, uh -huh. uh, which is good. I mean, and maybe there's a way that, uh, um, you know, we don't want to get criticized for pushing out smaller groups that are just starting and trying to get ahead of steam. But, uh, you know, maybe that's something, you know, the town, we, we need to address, you know, publicizing events and the great organizations that we have in town. Um, and maybe bring it into the 21st century a little bit too. Well, talking about that, um, we had a conversation with our former town manager about just about these banners back when, and he yep. was he suggested that that we could think about. I mean, the town could think about some kind of an electronic, you know, basically a what's going on in West Hartford this week. Now, where you put that and that you don't interfere with traffic, I don't know. You know, like you don't want somebody having an accident because they're yeah. looking at the, um, you know what I'm saying? It kind of is electronic and it goes this way. Yeah, and a I, scroll. A scroll. At least it for those who don't make it onto the banner, it might give you some publicity anyway. Yeah. You know, that these things are happening this week and make our town look pretty vibrant, like, Oh my goodness, there's 10 things happening this week. Yeah. You apply the same way. Maybe there's a small fee for that, um, but you get displayed somewhere. Let me um, let me see if we can set up an in-person meeting, get a, a few of us to go and talk to uh, Rick. Our, Rick Ludwith is our new uh, town manager. Or he's been with the town for over 20 years. Uh, and uh, he was the interim uh, town manager when Matt Hart left, and the council just made him the uh, permanent town manager, which I think is a great move. He's he he's very helpful. He's very engaged. He's all over, um, and I'm sure he'd be open to having you know talking with us. But it 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 really, I mean, it's it's got to be more than you know. Let's do something with uh, you know how do we make the banners at. Uh, Unity Green better, you know, how about this? How about, how about uh, you know, the Morris Columns? I think it all needs to be part of a bit, a bigger mm. plan. Mm. And then it, it it comes down to, you know, we, we're going to need to make the case to the town to spend the money. Because um, uh, right. I know Matt's, our treasurer is not on uh, the call, but uh, I'm pretty sure I know what our account balance is <laughs> for, <laughs> for our treasurer's report. But let me let me do that. Because, uh, Hav, I see your hands up. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say, um, I I definitely think you know bringing things into the uh, the new age uh, of of uh, technology would would serve us in in this in this case. Um, uh, the scrolling the banner, I I think uh, I agree that it could be a bit uh, distracting to. Um, to those who are, are driving by and kind of trying to wait to get to the end of the sentence and and uh you know can't they don't they don't uh, uh stay long enough to see it um but what if we did something that was more like you know i'm sure you've all seen the um billboards that are on 84 right around 
like right between like 48 and and 46 on either side where they're they're um they're they just change you they they change and they're not scrolling they're actual pictures it's almost like it, it would be a billboard um advertisement that has all the information on it and then in 10 seconds it switches to something else and it switches to something else and people pay big money for those things so i mean i know i'm not saying that we have to have a, a you know that size billboard uh you know somewhere on on unity green or or you know getting off of exit 43 uh where that nice new west harvard uh you know, you know uh thing is that uh, that they put in recently uh, but i think that would be something that would would catch everyone's eye it would i think people would be excited about something like that and, and uh they would make their money back uh you know because people would have to clearly pay for that advertising space and it's so easy uh you know you don't have to have you know you don't have to pay people 200 dollars to put it up and take it down anymore um so there would be some cost saved there um that you know they would still be able to charge the folks who are trying to advertise um you know they would they would they'd make way more money uh, because it would just be, you know, if they make an easy process for people to uh, to get their information on this billboard to advertise, I think it would it would be a no brainer if they're willing to spend the money on on something like that. Right, because then you could put up, say, five events in one week or six events in one week, and if yeah, even if yeah. we all paid a hundred dollars, right, um, it's cheaper for the organizations. There's less manpower involved in the upkeep. Right. And yet the town is the beneficiary if it's six organizations of six hundred dollars that week. And the next week they get another six hundred to a thousand dollars. Right. So and there it and should pay for be, itself. No, ab absolutely. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, I was gonna say there also could be some that are ongoing activities. It, it could be something about, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if this is what we would want, but for just for an example, it, you know, someone who wants to sign up for, you know, uh, music lessons at at uh the heart school of music community division for example that's something that could be up all year round that they would be willing to pay for that maybe it you know it comes on once an hour but that's still money that you know that that I, that establishment would be willing to pay for i i think that's that's i think it's an excellent idea um a few you know when i was um not to sound like an old timer but I actually proposed when I was on the town council the ability to allow uh, public advertising at Little League uh, and youth uh, parks. That was, uh, I was uh, very surprised at the overwhelming opposition from folks, uh, my colleagues too. <laughs> I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there, it, it, that was, that was a, a long time ago. But I, I do know, um, I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a way that we can make money. Um, you know, we, we it gets us into the 21st century. There's a lot of things we could do. But um, yeah, I, think, I think the town is very uh, cautious um, about, you know, I, I call it the uh, Potter's vilification, Potter's vilification of West Hartford. If you remember, and it's a wonderful life when George goes back and, you know, Bedford Falls is no longer Bedford Falls, it's Pottersville, and it's lots of shiny, flashy lights and advertisements and everything. Um, they, I know that's a, it's a very sensitive issue. And, you know, again, I agree with you guys. I think it's a great idea, but, you know, we, we need to be also, uh, cognizant of the fact that you know there we could we could get some pushback you know not mm -hmm. just from political folks but also people uh you know that don't want to see anything on uh you know any kind of uh you know signage electronic signage on unity green which really is uh you know that's kind of you know some of the most uh, precious space in town and, and most uh, cherished and and any of our public parks but it's it's we, we need to we need to have the conversation and a lot more than just oh you know hey town why don't you think about these uh um the, the cylinder advertisers yes carol 
But does it have to even be advertising? I mean, even if it's like all the people that use the banners now, like Karen was saying, if it's five or six of them paying at one time, they're still making some money. Are you saying that we need that to even pay for the, it doesn't even have to, like Hob was saying, it doesn't have to be huge. It can be, can it be like, instead of like what they're hanging there now, the banners just have it that size and just have it change. I mean, instead of um, hanging one banner at a time. I, I think it's a great idea. Without, without having like someone advertise. I mean, it's just the well, people, I, people I think that are putting their information yeah. now, it's just more are able to do it at one time. Yeah. And I mean, also it could be seen as a way to support arts organizations and others, you know, nonprofits to come back from COVID. I mean, there's ARPA funds out mm -hmm. there. So it could be seen as partially reimbursed by that kind of funding. The town has some discretion about how they're using that fund, those funds. We, we, we need to have this conversation. I think we're all kind of in- In agreement, yeah. Agreement yeah. That we need to do something, but, you know, as, as it, it, try to be uh, diplomatic. Change is difficult. Yeah. And- For this town especially. Well, all towns. I mean, yeah. change is, it's, it's, you know, change is actually constant. I believe that if you're not changing and growing, you're dying. And, you know, there's, there's new ways to look at things, but uh, automated uh, signage, uh, something I think is an excellent idea. Um, is, you know, we're going to get some pushback on. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why, you know, let, let me uh, talk to, you know, reach out to the town manager, see what his schedule is like. And, um, you know, that's, I, th I think we need to have that conversation with them first before we start uh, proposing stuff. Yes, Marilla. Um, it just crossed my mind. Would it be um, possible to get businesses involved into sponsoring you know, one of the Morris columns in front of a bank, for example, or uh, the intersection La Salle with Farmington, for example. I, I see that, you know, I, I could see how a business would be happy to attract more people in front of their doors. And I don't know, it's, yeah. it, it's, it is also there's and, precedent for that because you have, you know, some of the clocks you see around town. Yes, yes. Or, so, you know, have, have a business's name on it. So, yeah, I think there's there's a lot of um, ideas. And, uh, you know, once once we talk with the town and kind of, I, I think it's our job, we need to kind of- Raise focus, consciousness of it. Exactly. Raise the consciousness and, and not, um, and keep it at it, that we need to do a better job of, informing folks of events that are going on in town and do it in a you know respectable manner and one that doesn't you know diminish the landscape of uh you know our our town but let's have that conversation with the town and you know see if we can you know work together with them because at the end of the day if we if it if it doesn't have the town the town support and the council support it's it's not going to happen if if all of a sudden you know we propose something and we don't really um you know work it through the right way it'll be dead um, sure yes you're right because um we also you know i was thinking if we have five morris columns in the center will they all have the same displays i would hope so so then some you know we can control um it would look better because it will be done professionally. And um, I'm thinking that, you know, we want to advertise what happens in that week, right? So yeah. they will all have to look alike and, yeah. and be professionally installed. And then um, since I was uh, researching the Morris Collins, I just figured out that right now there are some electronic displays yeah. <laughs> or his columns. So, you know, if I the think big see, display doesn't work, maybe 
you know, smaller size. I, you know, I, cause then, then you're not, I, I like the idea of the electronic on the Morse columns. Cause then you're not having people, you know, changing okay. posters or putting things over. It looks a lot neater and you can do more. You can rotate those around. Um, but let's, I've got this on my list uh, to do, to reach out to Rick and, uh, you know, see if we can get a meeting with him. Sign me up. I'm happy to come to a meeting. Excellent. I'll, I'll let everyone know. But this is, this is definitely a, a, you know, we live in a great town and uh, this is a nice problem to have. You know, we have so many wonderful arts and culture organizations, so many great events, you know, that we're stepping all over each other to try and, you know, take advantage of this one opportunity we have in the center to uh, advertise. You know, it's time, time we look at the other options. Okay. Have we beaten that sign to death for the, for the night? Okay. <laughs> um, so moving on with the agenda, unless anybody has any other new business, uh, David, is there anybody from the public that's on that would like to uh, speak with us? We don't have anybody on. Okay. Before we close down, I just want to revisit. Um, it's not exactly new business. It's probably old. Latanya. Uh, you had the point a few meetings back about finding from out from artists what they wanted or how we could be helpful. And I think you devised something, didn't you? Yes. And I yes. think you sent it out. It was a while ago, though. It was. It was, it was, it was a while yeah, ago. it was. It was. Yeah, at the last uh, meeting um, in uh, May. And okay. I apologize for not getting that on the agenda. No, Let's, that's that's okay. It's been a. We've all been right. Kind of, right. Yeah. But I didn't want to lose track of it and, you know, maybe we pick it up next time or did yeah. it land somewhere? I mean, it would, we... it would be great to pick it up next time to talk a little bit more about it. Um, and I, I also wanted to talk a little bit more with Hav, like off committee wise to um, had some ideas of how to, how to do a little bit more um, connecting uh, like monthly with artists uh but i i wasn't sure if this was the format to talk about well, why don't we do this i if if, if um if you and hop want to talk talk in the next you know several weeks before the next meeting i'm happy to jump on also that would be great um and then we can bring back a a, a, a solid uh, kind of plan at our september meeting that would be great and that, that actually that? makes a lot of sense in terms of timing. Okay, good, good, I'm good. good with that. Excellent. Thank okay. you for that. Thanks, Karen. You're keeping us honest here, keeping us uh, keeping us on our toes. Um, unless anybody else has something for the good of the group, uh, is uh, someone like to make a motion, please, to adjourn? Just the third meeting in September is when we're coming back. Is that right? The third Monday, rather. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe we are, we're interfering with any holidays. Um... Well, you might want to check that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even. I don't know when the Jewish holidays are, but you know, we don't want to run into that. Yeah. Yeah. No, we we'll make sure they are in September. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Who wants to make the motion? Hob makes the motion. Is there a second? Carol seconds. All in favor? All right. Unanimous. Um, great. Thank you, everyone. Great meeting. Enjoy the rest of your summer. And uh, yes, have a good summer. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Chuck. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye, summer. Bye, bye. Thank you.